Amen. You may be seated just for a few minutes, just for a few minutes. Welcome to church this morning. Are we, are we using this, guys, for anything? No, we can Moving it back over here. I'll trip over it. Well, 
Welcome to happy Independence Day Eve. Some, I don't know, how, how, how do we say this? Uh, our country. Uh, I put a post on Facebook this morning. Just pray for our leaders. Pray for our leaders that they, and we as well, turn to follow Christ. Turn to follow Christ. That, that's what we need to do, is turn to follow him in his ways. Uh, we don't have to agree or argue or anything. We just need to point toward him. What we do. So go ahead and grab your bulletins and tear off that connection card if you're a guest. Praises, prayer requests. If you're a digital person, do the scan code. But we'd like to hear what's going on in your life so we can pray and support you how things go. Well, I was on my prayer and study retreat this last week up in Lone Pine. Uh, Lone Pine is a great small little town. Uh, it's, a, it's a great little town. If you're, if you're driving through it, it takes you like three seconds to drive through it. It's very, very small. But one thing I realized is on my prayer retreat is living out the scripture that's your prayer focus this week. In the back of the bulletin, pray to let your heavenly Father guide you on how to live this scripture out. Be still and know that I am God. Being still doesn't mean you're not doing anything. It's actively spending time with your Father. Spending time with Jesus and becoming more like him. So being still, intentionally spending time with Jesus. But I'm ready to worship. How about you guys? We've worshiped already. I'm ready to continue it. So let's pray. Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, please guide us to be still in your presence. Because, Lord, we're so busy running from one thing to the next to the next. Help us to slow down enough so we can spend the time with you in prayer and in worship. Lord, receive this worship. You're about to receive because you're worthy of it and so much more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we continue to worship.
we just thank you that you're leading us to the cross and that you are in control of all things from the weather to life and we just thank you for that and we just um just release that control daily right um, so that your will be done in your name amen you may be seated Hi, good morning. Um, I am now doing all the celebration funds. So if you um, have something to celebrate, um, there's cards in the back. Fill out that celebration, put a little bit of something inside. And all of the funds that we raise through our celebration fund goes towards our kids camp. 
Um, kids, we are leaving for camp at the end of this month. I have seven wonderful children going with me, and I cannot wait to see um, what God has in store for them at this, at that week. Um, so please just celebrate with us as we celebrate you as well. And that's all today. I'll be doing announcements today to grab your bulletins. Grab your bulletins. I'm watching you. Because I'll forget to announce something, but there's the power of reading. It's absolutely amazing to read stuff. The Kathleen works hard on this bulletin. Let's read it to know what's going on. But things we need to announce uh, that's coming up. Uh, she already did uh, kids camp, teen camp. The applications for teen camp are due today. But you can still turn it in. Uh, just go to a... You can still, they're due today, but you can still turn it in because we have a later registration. You can do it, so get those turned in. So uh, teens who's going to camp, raise your hands. All my kids so far, Kansas is going. Moise is back there going to camp. Get those applications turned in. It's only going to cost $100 to send your student to camp. That is a deal, a deal and a half. Send your kids to camp, turn that in. Because... Uh, the fundraisers we do and everything else, we discount camp tremendously so you guys can send your students to camp. Camp is life transforming. I know for kids camp, sometimes that's kids are, are start following Christ. At teen camp, they, they kind of solidify their walk with Jesus. Solidify their walk with Jesus. So pray for your kids as they go to camp in these next few weeks. Camp is absolutely amazing. And I'll say this too, if you have a hard time, you want to send your student to camp and you have a hard time coming with that $100, please talk to me. We can still find ways to get your students to camp. Um, the money should not be an obstacle if you send your kids to camp at all. Get that in there. So other stuff coming up. Uh, Joy uh, Fellowship is this week on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday at Denny's at what time? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. You read your bulletin. So nine o'clock. So who is there? Just older youth. All my, all my good friends. All my good friends. Just older youth and usually me, but I'm out of town this week, so I'll miss you guys. I'm praying for you guys that I'll be out of town at family camp with my family uh, this week. So other ones that, so Grace Resources is coming up. Great, we have the opportunity to serve the needy in our community. Uh, this is the, the children, youth, and young adults are doing this combined this time. So we're doing Sloppy Joes. If you can donate stuff, fill that connection card, turn it in, get hold of the office so we can serve the needy in our community. It's our privilege to serve, to be Jesus to those in the world around us. I mean, like anything else that needs to be announced. I'm looking around, seeing if there's reminders, if I'm forgetting something. If not, it's in the bulletin. Read it. So it's the first Sunday of the month, and we have the kids in here, and I like talking with the kids. I'm going to up. So kids, if you can come up, I have questions for you. You can come over right here. Right here's fine. Good to see you guys. I mean, I miss seeing you guys every day for vacation Bible school. So it's wonderful. So what is tomorrow? Fourth of July. What does that mean? What's it mean? It's party time. It's party time, he says. Fireworks. Fireworks. And she forgot. Okay. At Fourth of July, that celebration of our, our freedom, our independence day, America. But I'm going to talk about freedom. Freedom. What does the word freedom mean to you? Freedom means to me when it's summer vacation, so I don't have to go to school. That's freedom. Okay. <laughs> I'm jealous. I'm an adult now. I don't have that freedom anymore. Uh, he said the freedom, I don't know if you heard it very clearly, freedom for him uh, is Summer vacation, because he doesn't have to go to school, tie down to rules. Same thing, his brother. Anybody else? Freedom. Yeah, I know. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Freedom, yes. Anybody else? Freedom. What does freedom mean to you? You don't have to answer. I'm just giving you a chance. So freedom. Let's talk about opposites. What is the opposite of freedom? You just you do stuff every day. You do stuff every day? You're trapped. 
You're trapped. You have to go to school forever. You have to go to school forever. This is why we have these conversations. These are amazing. You're trapped to school forever. It, it, school does end eventually, but then you've got to go to work, and it's the same thing. So, trapped forever. But, so enjoy being a child. Always that. Be a child as long as you can. It's good advice. I'll get you in a minute. But freedom. I'm going to talk about freedom for us. Is Yes, we're freedom as Christians. We are freed from sin if we follow Jesus Christ. Do you know Jesus Christ died for your sins? Yes. yes. He died for your sins so you could live a free life without the burden of carrying around sin all the time. Because carrying around sin is slavery. Do you understand that, right? You are a slave to sin. You are under bondage all the time. I'm using big words, right? Bondage, stuff like that. Think you're always being tied up and you can't do what you want because you're so weighed down. I pray that you children know the freedom that comes from following Christ. I know Hope last week got baptized. That was awesome. That being dedicated to following Christ. I hope pray you do. You have something to say? I'm going to give you a math question. No math questions, not good at math. Don't don't ever ask. No. Don't ask pastors to do math. We're not good at it. Ask, ask, that's Ruth. We'll round up so, all the time. But I pray you guys find freedom in Christ and, and know that we are here to guide you with it. I, I know, uh, I think Holly's got something for as, as you guys go. But let me pray for you guys. Let's bow our head, close our eyes. Let's pray. The gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, be with these students. Help them to know that they are loved by you and they have the freedom that can be found in Christ. Lord, help us to celebrate our country, our freedom in this country we have. The freedom that we can worship you in peace and safety. I pray we continue to follow that lead as a country, that we are one nation under God, always. Lord, you're amazing. Thank you for your love, your grace, and your forgiveness. In Jesus, let me pray. Amen. Amen. Holly's got something for you guys. Our name on the wall is we are Valley View Church of the Nazarene. Who here knows what that means? Very few people. We're going to, like, what does it mean to be Valley View Church of the Nazarene? We've been in existence for over 50 years. It's wonderful. But the Nazarene Church has been around a lot longer. Nazarene Church. Nazarene means we are a people set apart to do good works. Uh, I was at District Assembly over a week ago, and... We're reminded of what we are. We are called as a Nazarene denomination to make Christ-like disciples in all the nations. Do you understand that we are in all the nations too here? Well, we need to do a better job of being Christ-like disciples here in the United States. And so my sermon is going to be directed toward that. What does a disciple look like? What does a disciple look like? It's supposed to look like Jesus. Also, like who he is. And so, are we shaping ourselves like Jesus? And we're going to jump into it. We're in, the, we're, in, we're in Colossians. We're in Colossians chapter 3 today. Go in your Bibles. If, Colossians 3, I'll start at verse 5. But let me pray. To grace the Lord and Heavenly Father, help us to be the people you've called us to be. A people set apart to do your work, to build your kingdom here. Help us become the Christ-like disciples you've called us to be. And Lord, we know it's going to be hard, but with you, all things are possible. You are with us always. Help us to know this. We are not alone on this journey. You are with us. So turn to Colossians 3, verse 5, chapter 5. I want to read through 14. My tech team follow along with the scripture for me as I read out of the Bible so I don't have to turn it. Verse 5, you guys ready? You all there? It's on the screen, but also bring your Bibles. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. 
You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but you now must also rid yourselves of all such things as anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have been taken off your old self with his practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge and the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Greek, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against one, forgive as the Lord forgave you. The word of the Lord. Man. I'm going to apologize to parents right now, but I'm not, so, I'm not sorry for what. I'm sorry you're going to have to have some fun conversations with your kids today. Because we're going to talk about some really sensitive subjects today that we need to talk to our kids about. You see the picture on the screen, right? What's the picture on the screen of? This is a cemetery. The Apostle Paul tells us in the scripture right here, some things in our life we need to put to death. We need to put these things to death. That means kill it. Be gone. It no longer is a part of our life. And he gives us a list. So we're going to go on this list. First is sexual immorality. Put to death sexual immorality. Yes, kids, I'm talking about sex in church today. Sexual immorality. What is sexual immorality? We can talk about this and go on this, but I'll tell you what sex is supposed to be designed for. Sex is designed to be between a husband and a wife in marriage. Anything outside of that is sexual immorality. Anything outside of that is sexual immorality. Anything. It's sexual immorality. We need to put that to death. So sex is designed between a husband and a wife in marriage. If I'm stepping on your toes, I'm sorry, but that's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says, and that's where we got to live it up. But I'm telling you, it is the way it's supposed to be. It's wonderful. It's great. God designed it. It works. And if we step outside of those bounds, we start looking like the world around us. And we start making things that are okay that are not okay according to God's word. So sexual morality, I don't have to do a long list here. You know what it is. It's anything outside of marriage. Next, impurity. Impurity. And that really divine is anything that you have that is not pure, right? Pretty simple definition. Anything is not pure. Purity. So here we got to talk about things. What is impure in this life? We can do a long list, right? A long list. A long list. This is, this is impure, 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 impure. When I think of impure, I, I go back to work back in the day. I work with my grandpa. There is a, a company called Dairyman's, and Dairyman's made a lot of milk products, a whole lot of milk products. And one of their biggest things they made was cottage cheese. Who likes cottage cheese? Who thinks cottage cheese is gross? Yeah, it's always half and half. It's always half and half. Uh, but here's something that's more gross. Uh, when you get the balance off, impurities in there, cottage cheese can go really, 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 really bad. One day we're uh, called in because the cottage cheese vat uh, broke. And so... I, being the smallest guy in my grandpa's shop, had to crawl into the vat to do a, a, a welding repair because you couldn't get the whole vat to take it out. You had to crawl into the vat. And I can smell it today. I can, uh, you know what cottage cheese smells like, right? When it's good. Imagine what cottage cheese smells like when it's not good. It smells like death. Like 18,000 dead cats in here. It is, it is a horrible, terrible smell. And when you get in there and you have to add heat to it, it is a wonderful aroma. I can taste it right now. 
This is the idea I want you to have when impurity is in your mind. It is gross. It is wrong. Don't allow it to come into your life because it can ruin everything. Another bad smell will go on, and I can smell this smell right away. Kathleen can confirm it. There's, there's a bad smell when an orange has gone bad. You ever had that in your house? You walk in, you're like, ooh, there's, there's a rotten orange somewhere. I mean, I've, I've walked in here, we have cuties, right? Quite a bit for things. I walk in, I go, ooh, there's a bad one. Let's find it. You know what happens if you don't get rid of that bad orange? The rest start going bad fast. It spreads. It spreads quickly, and everything will go rotten. If we allow impurity to exist amongst us, it will allow everything else to go bad. And so it is our individual responsibility and community responsibility to check on ourselves and say, am I living an impure life? Is there anything else living impure? And let's work on it. We can clean it. God can clean it. He's with us. He's walking with us. There's not the end of the world, but we can get it fixed. So don't allow impurity to fester in your life because it can ruin everything around you. Next is lust. Lust. It's a bad one. I know I'm going to say very clearly here. Lust can ruin everything. Lust It can be, you can talk about sexual lust, we can talk about lust for food, we can talk about lust for anything. Lust is wanting something that you shouldn't have and all your mind is wrapped around it and it can't leave you. I'll tell you something very clearly at this point. Uh, Pornography is lust. Pornography is lust. Pornography will ruin your marriage your future marriage, your current marriage, it'll ruin your kids, it'll ruin everything around you because it just makes you want something that you shouldn't be having. So lust, I mean, the word alone sounds terrible, right? Just saying it sounds, ooh, sounds gross. Don't allow lust to take over your life. Get rid of it, kill it. If you need help getting rid of lust in your life, come talk to me. You're not the only one that's on that journey of getting rid of these things in your life. We've all gone through it. We can help each other to walk through these things to get rid of. Next, evil desires. Evil desires. And like, Pastor, what, what does evil desires look like? It can look like in several ways. It's, it's, but I'll explain it this way. It's when you don't look at your neighbor and want the best for them. When you look... That's what we should be doing. Sometimes we, we are, we are, our evil desires is that I want to take advantage of those around me. I'll use my neighbors. I'll use my work. Evil desires, it's I'm wanting the worst for somebody else. I want to hurt somebody. I want to, I want to hurt somebody. That is evil. Wanting the desire to go hurt somebody is not the way God wants you to behave. And I say this like it's common sense, right? We, don't, we shouldn't hurt anybody else. And, but why does Paul put this in there? Because we do it. We, we hurt each other all the time. We say bad things, we do bad things, we post bad things, and we create evil around us. And it keeps going. It's just like the impurity. It just will kill everything around you. So put to death your evil desires and evil desires mean if I'm, if I'm trying to hurt somebody or take advantage of somebody, that is evil. Next, greed, idolatry. Oh, man. This is, this is a harsh subject because, man, we all like having stuff. Right? Can I get amen? And I want to tell you clearly, there's nothing wrong with stuff. Stuff is good. God given to you to be used. It's wonderful. But greed is when you have too much of it. Because it starts consuming you. Because when you're trying to build your bank account and have tons of money, you're, that's all you think about is money. When I mean, you think about all these things you want to collect, I mean, I'll tell you something very clearly is keep your collections down to a minimum. 
I'm talking to yours, I'm talking to myself here. I have way too many coffee cups. I love because I like coffee cups. They're fun, they have stories. But you only can have so many you, there's only so many day times you can use a coffee mug, right? Oh my goodness. But you know what happens, right? You when you're in your house and you go grab your coffee cup, you grab the same one because you like that same one. You don't need 18 bazillion coffee cups. Or whatever it is that you are greedy for. Greed is, I want more than I should have. That's it. It's pretty simple. But we all get to the point where we want more. Paul tells us in other, other books that the, the secret to life is being content with what you have. Find contentment in what you have already. Find the joy in what you already own. And I'll go even a step further. There's even more joy when we start giving our stuff away to others, blessing others with our stuff, with our resources, with our finances, with our time. And I put greed and idolatry together because they go hand in hand. He says it in the scripture. Did you read it? I want to make sure that I'm, I'm preaching you stuff that's in the Bible. It's not what I'm saying. Back to the next page. And greed, it's verse 5. And greed, which becomes idolatry. Like I said before, it's not about stuff. Stuff is good. God wants you to have stuff. He wants you to have a house. He wants you to have food. He doesn't, he doesn't want you to have you, like, you guys, most of you know me right now. I love hot wings. Hot wings are wonderful. They're great. But eight hot wings is enough. Twelve hot wings is too much. But 12, but it's a better number, right? It's 12. It's a better number. No. Yeah. Have you ever eaten 12 hot wings? I mean, pray for Charles. No, pray for me. I've eaten 12 hot wings, and it's too much. Because if you eat 12 hot wings, you've got to eat like a gallon of ranch with it, right? And, and so, man, it's too much of a good thing. It's greed. I don't need that much. And we all have our things where we don't need. I know everybody's like grossed out how much ranch. You know, know, so. By the way, ranch is very fatty, but it's delicious. So what is God putting on your heart right now? What is becoming an idol in your life? Greed. Sometimes greed looks like attention. I need more attention. I don't. I don't like that. Don't pay attention to me. Pay attention to somebody else. But some of you might say, like, we post on Facebook because we want people to like our posts and like and like and Instagram and YouTube and all kinds of stuff. We're looking for attention. It's not our job as Christians. Our job as Christians is to point to Jesus. So those are things you need to put to death. These are things you need to work on and work on seriously. Here's the next list. I love this imagery too. This is a trash truck. And public service announcement, if your trash gets picked up on Mondays, not this week, it'll be picked up on Tuesday, 4th of July. Remember that. So these are things that Apostle Paul tells us, these are things we need to throw away. These are things that they exist in your life and in your house. Get rid of it. First one, anger and rage. These are things we need to throw away. There is I put anger and rage together because rage is anger gone bad. There is such thing as righteous anger. When you see injustice happening in the world, that is good anger. But anger amount with rage. Rage means I want to hurt you and I want to take advantage of you and I am so angry I am losing it. Have you ever lost it? Everybody should have hands to be up because we've all been there. We've lost it and gotten angry. We need to get rid of that in our lives and apologize when we have gone too far. Say our sorry and be sorry. And get rid of anger and rage. 
So if you, if you are a physical person and you need to do this act this week, I recommend you go home, write down rage and anger on a piece of paper, wad it up, and throw it in the trash. Take the physical act and do it. I want to get rid of this. There's other lists to go on. Get rid of anger and rage. All it does is make people around you feel terrible. In the end long, it makes you feel terrible. I know this by personal experience. Get rid of it. It only causes strife. Next, malice and slander. Malice and slander. If you're talking trash about somebody, please stop it. Really. If you're talking trash about anybody in any way, stop it. That is not Christian. That is not Christian behavior. I'm, I'm, if, if people are behaving in sinful ways, that's different. You're calling them out and holding them accountable if they're Christians. If they're not Christians, it's your job to, is to love them into the kingdom. It's not our job to trash talk to anybody about anybody and anything. If, you've say, if you're saying bad anything about anybody, you are not behaving like Christ. Get rid of it. Throw it away. Stop doing it. It hurts you and others around you. Next, filthy language. Filthy language. Get rid of filthy language in your life. Nobody likes it. Doesn't look, you don't look good. Doesn't make Jesus look good when you have filthy language in your life. Stop using it. And the best way to stop using it is stop being around it. Stop allowing it in. If you're watching those movies with filthy language in it, garbage in, garbage out. If you're surrounded with people that use bad language, it's going to get in you. You can't help it. It just, it seeps in. And you hear yourself saying it. You're like, whoa, why am I? Because I've surrounded myself with people that have filthy language. Get rid of it. Get rid of it in your life. Throw it away. It's gone. Next, lying. Lying. Pretty simple. If you're, if you're lying, stop it. And if you have told lies, start confessing and tell the truth. I promise you, you'll be more free than you could possibly imagine. I've been here. I've been here, right? I've had so many lies I've told in the past that it just weighs on me in tremendous ways. There's nothing more freeing when you've confessed and you're free. You go to bed at night, and you don't have to figure out all the lies you told, so you have to remember all the lies you told, so you can be consistent in your lie telling. That'll just wear you out. Because you got to keep it up, the appearances. Oh man, I told this lie and this lie to that person and this person. Oh man, and then that person doesn't know that lie, so i got to tell them. And you, it, just, it just so much, it wears you out. So confession. I'm going to give you guys a moment or two a confession a little bit. The altars are going to be open to, to confess some of these lists that we need to get rid of. To confess our sins so God can help us change. So now we've done the negative. We've done the negative. We've, this is stuff we need to put death. We need to throw away. And now Paul, in his amazing wisdom, gives us stuff that we need to put on. Stuff that we can do as Christians. Think of this clothes you put on in your closet. Good clothes. Wonderful clothes. Next, put on compassion. Compassion. I'll tell you what, church, this is huge. We, if we have compassion to those around us, we will change the world and we will be changed ourselves. If we look at somebody and have compassion, we will be changed. So how, what's it look like? What, what, like? How do you put on compassion? You put on compassion is you see people for how can I be Jesus to them? How can I show my love from Christ to them? Sit with them. Be with them. Join them. Compassion truly means, that if you want to go to the, the Greek definition, the Hebrew definition, it means to be 
together with, come alongside. That's the Greek word, to come alongside somebody. Just walk with them. Come alongside and say, how can I support you? How can I be with you? If there's somebody that you don't agree with right now, if there's somebody you're fighting with or just I don't see eye to eye, come alongside them and say, that's okay, I'm still with you. I'm alongside you. How can I support you? How can I be there for you? It will change them and change you. Kindness. In the words of Thumper from Bambi, if you can't say nothing nice, don't say nothing at all. And you got to say nothing. You can't say the G. You have to say nothing. Why, why, why do we choose not to be kind? There's no, it doesn't hurt you to be kind. Be kind. Be kind to everyone. Be kind to yourself. Just be kind. Choose it. It's wonderful. It'll, it's the most, one of the most Christian things you can do. Just be kind. Let that person go in front of you in the grocery store. Park far away because somebody else can't walk. If you see somebody that needs help, help them. If you, if you think of a kind word to say to somebody, say it. Be kind. Choose kindness. Next, humility. Humility. You are no better off than anybody else. You are not superior in any way to anybody. So don't think of yourself as so. So walk, don't walk around like I'm better than you are or I think better than you are. The answer is you're not. Be humble. Be humble always. Gentleness and patience. Gentleness and patience. Choose to be gentle. Choose to be patient. So Paul tells us put on. And I'll be honest with you, compassion I can do pretty good, kindness pretty good, humility, but gentleness and patience I'm not so good at. I'm going to be better. Because Apostle Paul told me to do it as a Christian, to be the example, to be Nazarene, set apart, to look different. I'm going to be known as gentle Pastor Mike, patient Pastor Mike, not Mr. Go, go, go all the time, Pastor Mike. Let gentleness and patience guide you. It'll, it'll, it'll change your whole family dynamic if you just, live, just choose these two. It'll change everything you're in your family. Just be gentle and patient. Next, forgiveness. It's on, it's on the sign outside. You drove by, what's our sign say? Forgive them, even if they're not sorry. Forgive somebody, just forgive them. Even if they're not sorry for what they've done to you, forgive them anyway. All, all it does is weigh you down. Forgive them. Move along. It doesn't mean that you forget what they did to you. Don't get me wrong. Don't let them hurt you again. But forgive them. That means I don't hold it against them. Move along. Forgive. Practice forgiveness. Just forgive people. Because look at this list. This is what Christ did for you and me. He looked on us with compassion and kindness, humility. He is God. He came down to this earth as a baby, raised by humans, killed by humans. But he did it because he loves us. And we celebrate that today in communion. Just a little bit. We're going to celebrate communion. Communion means celebrating Christ's sacrifice on the cross for us. We remember it so we can become more like him. And the last part of the scripture is this. Love binds us together in perfect unity. Love. Just do it. Just love your neighbor. Love them means I want the best for them. I want to serve them. I want to see them succeed. Let's start loving our neighbor. Be kind. Because Jesus showed us that kind of love. As the worship team comes up, the altars are open. They're open for you for several reasons. One, because God has called us to be confessors. 
None of us in this room is a perfect person. We have all fallen short of the grace of God. So there's no judgment here. We come and ask for forgiveness and grace. If there's stuff on that list we gave you, the stuff we need to get rid of and put to death, come and confess it and be ready to take communion and be ready to know that you are loved by the one true and living God. As I start singing, if you want to come pray, come pray. Let me pray for us. Dear Lord, help us to be the Christians that Apostle Paul called us to be. Help us to be compassionate and kind and humble, gentle and patient and forgiving. Help us to put on those kind of attributes so we can be the people you called us to be. Lord, you're amazing. Thank you for your grace and love and especially your forgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand with us.
Man. Those are helping serve communion. Please come. The rest, you may be seated. In the Church of the Nazarene, you don't have to be a member of our church to take communion. Communion is open to all. You just have to be a follower of Jesus Christ to take communion. So please hold the elements and we'll partake together. We get to participate in a sacrament that's been around for thousands of years, been passed down from generation to generation and generation. And it's all about Jesus' love for us. On the night that Jesus would be betrayed, he gathered 12 disciples into the upper room to celebrate the Passover meal. And the Passover is a story of God's love for the nation of Israel. And Jesus goes, man, This is who I want to be with. This is my family. I look at you, you are my family. We're on this journey together as followers of Christ. On the table, he had bread. Jesus took it. He said, this bread represents my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat. Eat. 
Also on the table, there was a cup. And the cup represented the blood of the lamb that saved the firstborn from the angel of death. Jesus took the cup and said, this cup now represents my blood, which be shed for the sins of the world, your sins and my sins. Jesus died for you. Take and drink. Let's pray. Dear Lord, help us become more like your son and look at the world and live it with compassion and kindness, with patience and gentleness and forgiveness. Help us become more like your son from the inside to the outside. Lord, thank you for your love. Be with us as we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. Go in peace. Have a happy fourth, guys. Stay safe. Stay safe.